Welcome back in the Space Info Club. Today, with the update and the news of the week, the excitation is mounting because a lot of events occurred this week. So let's start. Welcome back. Here, we talk about space and everything related to it. If you are passionate about space, astronomy, technology, and everything about it, you can join all our social platform at the Space Info Club or our website at www.spaceinfo.club, where tons of content and a community of experts are there waiting for you. This is the Space Info Club. Today we talk about a couple of launches that a lot of people were uh, waiting for, particularly I'm talking about Starship, I'm talking about uh, the NASA and Boeing uh, Starliner spacecraft, and then a couple of more news with a couple of launches and events that occurred this week. I'm talking about uh, European Space Agency with collaboration of the Japanese uh, uh, exploration, uh, Space Exploration Agency, JAXA, and I'm talking about uh, the Earth Care mission. And finally, we'll uh, spend a few words about China, yes, China again. Again, who, uh, which said to have landed on the far side of the moon. But uh, let's now start talking about the most important event uh, of today. I'm recording uh, on June the 6th and uh, a few hours ago, uh, two, two or three hours ago, Starship uh, accomplished the, f the fourth flight, the fourth test flight uh, and it was amazing. A lot of people uh, stand there to, to look at the event, a lot of people watch the live event on YouTube and all the streaming platform. I hope you are uh, among them, but if you haven't, uh, give a look uh, to the highlights of the launch because they were spectacular. Indeed, uh, we can start by mentioning successful soft landing of the Starship Super Heavy Rocket Booster, which is uh, the uh, the tweet, uh, let's say the ex post of uh, Elon Musk on uh, on the social, and then uh, uh, after a few minutes, uh, particularly uh, uh, something like uh, um, 45 minutes of flight, uh, Starship landed back in the ocean uh, by starship i mean uh, the upper stage of the whole rocket and uh, we we had a couple of uh, a couple of success indeed uh, the, uh, the the goals of the flight test of today were uh, were two mainly and the the positive landing of the heavy uh, uh, booster which is the the first stage of the um, spacex starship overall rocket and of the uh, ship uh, the starship itself which is the upper stage of the uh, of the tandem configuration which is the caps which is the ship basically and uh, which also landed successfully, especially down in the ocean. Uh, we, uh, we have assisted to a few uh, glitches, let's say, particularly in a, in a fin and uh, in a not 100% robust control of the, of the ship, but uh, both the, the booster and the spacecraft successfully landed and performed uh, almost perfectly uh, what, the, what the goal were. Indeed, we can just give a, a fast look to the uh, live streaming that was uh, uh, transmitted today. I invite you to give a look on YouTube and all the other streaming flat platform to the at least the highlights because they were spectacular. A lot of people assisted to the launch and in particularly now we are just giving you a a side view and a fast view of the overall launch. If you want to see a video, let us know in the comments or write on our social uh, channels. Let us know what you think, what you'd like to see, so we can realize a video dedicated only to Starship. So this is the launch sequence, uh, which was nominal three, two, one, and lift off. Now we are assisting uh, to the replay of the lift off. As you can see, uh, almost all the engines, uh, one uh, one engine of the booster just shut it down at the very beginning of the launch, and then all the other thirty-two uh, uh, engines performing nominally, and also the the engines of the of the ship itself. Now let's skip a little forward to see what happened. Now we have uh, we are just high in the atmosphere. With the, with this view, we are approaching the the detaching. Uh, well, uh, no, the detaching of the the Miko and the separation also already occurred. We are seeing uh, the spectacular images of the separation uh, between the booster and the ship. And then we just skip a little forward again. Let us know if you want a dedicated video to this flight test number four of the SpaceX uh, Starship. And then we uh, we will see the the landing the, in the splashdown of the booster in a few minutes. And we can just skip to the event. And it was uh, uh, something like uh, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico or in that part in that. Uh, 
in that uh, background we can see the the fins maneuvering the control of the rocket uh, basically perfectly operating and uh, the the finishing reignition of the engines and a perfect splash down vertical configuration in the ocean so the the booster performed perfectly and so the land was nominal as expected as hoped i would say and now we can skip again uh, skip forward to the splash down of the of the ship but before going on uh, we'll spend a few words about the other event of the week which was much awaited um, okay now spoiler the sp the starship will land perfectly with splash down in the indian ocean and uh, uh, we'll see the images in a few in a few seconds but uh, let's get back to talking about uh, uh, just a side note about starship which uh, as we can read uh, on the uh, Space News website, uh, well, um, it seems that uh, uh, some people <laughs> are already uh, giving some problem, uh, trying to give some problems because Elon Musk said that uh, we will uh, probably assist to uh, further four launches uh, this year of this of the Starship. Uh, two uh, have been already performed, uh, and four have to uh, are to to become. We know that uh, SpaceX has uh, a, a huge capability of uh, in, uh, industrial producing uh, and engineering uh, the the production of the spacecraft which is optimized also under this point of view so uh, the bottleneck won't be for sure under the uh, spacex responsibility but uh, probably the problems if there will be we hope not for sure will be under the regulatory side particularly under the federal aviation agency that's the FAA, which is the agency which gives the license, which is the permission to launch the rocket into into the sky, and uh, this is the, the main problem uh, on the on the horizon for SpaceX because uh, probably some uh, some licenses cannot be granted in the next future. So uh, the goal is to perform again four uh, four launches of, before the end of the 2024, but probably uh, well, probably uh, maybe this won't be possible, and the main cause is uh, foreseen as the um, uh, is the, the the not concession of the FAA launch launches uh, launch uh, license and uh, uh, we can see uh, as I was saying on the spacenews.com website uh, this is a few paragraph uh, titled the new low sea threat and uh, we can read that uh, an environmental review conducted by the Federal Aviation Agency before the second Starship and Super Heavy launch in November concluded that the additional of the water uh, deluge system result in no significant environmental changes so this is basically the the conclusion uh, of the, uh, the the uh, the, the quest uh, particularly in the uh, in the waters closer to the launch site uh, star, star base uh, because some people were suspecting that uh, all this activity this launch activity uh, nearby the waters could uh, uh, affect the, the environment and cause uh, give uh, bad causes uh, bad consequences to the to the waters and the, the environment closer to the to the launch site but uh, for sure this seems that uh, have not happened in all this launches so this is probably not a problem for SpaceX in the in the next future now back to the second topic of today and uh, which is uh, as we can see um, to the live stream today on the on the NASA website uh, sorry on the NASA YouTube uh, YouTube channel here uh, we can see that uh, uh, we are assisting to the live event of the uh, live coverage of the Boeing Starliner dock to the International Space Station if uh, this event will happen before the end of this video but uh, i don't think so we will assist uh, directly to the dock uh, to the docking phase uh, between the Boeing Starliner to the International Space Station but uh, yes uh, i've spoiled I, I spoiled the the topic because if you haven't uh, if you have lost the you have missed the the news yes Boeing Starliner was finally launched on uh, Ju uh, on June the, the 5th 2024 after some delays after some scrubbing and uh, yeah this is not uh, i would say uh, a lucky spacecraft as we all know and if you if you don't know we'll uh, just tell us and we'll uh, we'll just release a video dedicated uh, to Boeing Starliner spacecraft to its history and uh, to what happened to the spacecraft up to now and up to the delay uh, to the day of launch because uh, uh, a lot of times we uh, Boeing encountered some problems and um, 
the, the whole project was born in the in the case of in the let's say yeah in the context of Na, uh, NASA commercial uh, crew development program uh, commercial spacecraft crew, crew development program which is a spacecraft where NASA gives funds uh, up to now something like 4.2 4, 4 0.5 billions to private companies like SpaceX and Boeing uh, to, to fund the, the, the development of commercial uh, spacecraft in order to supply the International Space Station and uh, to be able to uh, transport people, crew, to the International Space Station, uh, yeah, substituting which was the Space Shuttle and now uh, today, uh, before SpaceX, was only the uh, Russian Soyuz. Well, we know that just uh, let's go to the uh, to the direct news of the day. Uh, the Boeing Starliner was launched today. On board, we have two astronauts, uh, Sunita Williams, uh, 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 which, uh, who is uh, the, uh, the pilot. And uh, we know that uh, there have been some problems uh, also, and there are uh, currently some problems, particularly uh, we have a, an helium leakage uh, from the tanks. Uh, helium is not a, a propellant nor a fuel for the spacecraft, it is an inert gas so it cannot be used as a propellant or a fuel, but it is used uh, basically uh, as a, a pressure a pressure supplier indeed uh, the the tanks are pressurized are gas pressurized which means that uh, uh, the propellant the fuels uh, so the fluids uh, the, the combustive the combustion fluids uh, in the tanks are kept under pressure thanks to an inert gas indeed uh, you cannot imagine to to use the the gas vapor from the fuel uh, to to pressurize the the fuel itself because it is not possible so you have to imagine that you have to inject some gas which does not participate in the combustion in order to keep pressurized to give pressure to the to the um, to the liquids inside the tanks in order to, to yeah to supply pressure to uh, allow the des, des fluids which are the, uh, the propellant and the fuel to reach to the combustion chamber and to allow the, the combustion. Indeed uh, we know that this helium leakage was uh, already discovered in the past days uh, where the, when the launch was, uh, was scrubbed and uh, firstly uh, this year in uh, May the 6th, 2024, the launch was scrubbed uh, due to a problem in the uh, in the valve uh, in the upper stage uh, of the Delta, uh, of the uh, ULA uh, rocket, uh, which is the Atlas V. So the launch was scrubbed not due to the Boeing Starliner capsule itself, but then uh, it was uh, scrubbed again due to a, um, a, a, a launch counter computer which failed uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, something like yeah, a couple of we weeks ago, and then due to this problem, also Boeing engineers uh, tried to investigate, and then almost uh, some some people say by chance discovered an helium leakage in the tanks, and so they just tried to um, yeah to to overcome this uh, this leakage by fixing it, but. Uh, for what we know, this leakage was not fixed correctly, or there is another leakage of the same nature, but in a different part, in a different spot. Today, the launch was uh, was uh, almost nominal. Now, uh, yeah, well, yesterday the launch was almost nominal. Uh, the overall costing phase from uh, from the launch pad to the International Space Station should last something like 25 hours, where the two people on board will finally dock to the International Space Station. And this docking phase is another uh, constraint to the launch. Indeed, uh, should people should uh, the launch uh, was scrubbed again. Uh, well, uh, one of the problem was uh, uh, that the the the, the window uh, the window the docking window on the International Space Station uh, was. Uh, uh, coming close because uh, uh, the docking port designated to this capsule uh, uh, had to be used for different docking for different docking spacecraft in the next days. So basically, there was no more room for the uh, Starliner capsule to dock to the International Space Station. So uh, luckily, the launch uh, happened uh, happened yesterday, and it is going to dock uh, in a few minutes, basically. And we'll see how uh, the, the rest of the mission will go, how the investigation uh, from Boeing's engineer and NASA engineer uh, will, will, will conclude and how this leakage uh, will affect the overall mission. We only know that uh, the nominal duration of the mission is from the docking up to the end of the mission, uh, seven, 10 days. So uh, we'll just get back in a, in a few days maybe in a, in a week and uh, we'll give you an update and again if you want to have a dedicated video about Boeing Starliner capsule just let us know in the comment we have some 
uh, just a, a few images of what happened uh, uh, yesterday with a nominal launch from the ULA uh, Atlas V rocket and then uh, uh, the launch was basically nominal and uh, everything uh, was as expected uh, we have no particular images no particular uh, re-entry phases because uh, this is uh, atlas 5 so yeah now let's go on with the, for the with the third topic of the news of today but before going on i would just like to uh, give you a, a fast look on our website i strongly invite you to visit uh, spaceinfo.club where you can join completely completely for free our club and you can access exclusive content for all the members again which can, who can join for free we have uh, uh, some dedicated content here is uh, just a fast overview of our partners our collaboration if you are a company or a space startup contact us we can just give you some consulting and also uh, some advertising dedicated we uh, we have dedicated services for you, but for the members club who can just access the, uh, all the content, articles, uh, courses uh, and all the other things and also particularly the magazine with dedicated and exclusive insights from a space expert. As you can see, here are some, some of them and uh, I, I just invite you to visit www.spaceinfo.club and give a look to our website. Now back to the uh, topic of today. Um, at the first, the, Third topic is uh, ESA Earthcare, a mission which was launched the last week on May 29th and the mission was launched again from Falcon 9 SpaceX rocket and uh, the launch again occurred in California, Vandenberg, uh, the May 29th of 2024 and the uh, Earthcare where, uh, is an acronym which means Earth Cloud Aerosol and Radiation Explorer which is a mission from uh, the European Space Agency, basically, with the collaboration of the Japanese Space Agency. On board we have four instruments for Earth observation, we'll give a look in a minute. Uh, we have uh, 20, 21 square meters of solar panel to give uh, uh, enough power supply to all the instruments, and the, uh, the satellite is flying uh, almost at the altitude of the International Space Station. Indeed, we have 393 kilometers of altitude, so we have there it is placed in low Earth orbit, in low Earth orbit, and just to give a fast look to the mission again. Also, in this case, let us know in the comment if you want deeper insights into the mission itself. So we give you a dedicated video. This is uh, the separation uh, again from ESA, uh, ESA and I, I think yes, SpaceX uh, images. The separation of the satellite. Now the satellite, as you may know, is uh, in its uh, um, commissioning phase, which is one of the phases of uh, typical phases of space missions. The very first is the uh, the preparation, the ground segment, the ground phase. Then we have the launch phase and early uh, early mission phases. The commissioning phase is not uh, the operative one for for every satellite. It, it is indeed a, a phase where people on the ground have to to communicate with the spacecraft, set uh, the instruments, calibrate the instruments, uh, and make sure that everything is working nominally and uh, as expected. Typically, this depending on the complexity of the satellite, uh, where commercial satellites, so small cube sites, uh, cube site satellite can can just take a few days or a few hours commissioning phases. But satellite like this uh, maybe can take up to some months uh, to conclude the commissioning phases, and then the the nominal phase uh, just starts, uh, and the satellite can start operate uh, for what for uh, what it was designed. Particularly, there are four instruments on board. They are uh, dedicated to Earth observation, and uh, uh, among them we can find LiDAR instruments uh, to, for cloud observation and also radar instruments, again, for, climate, uh, for uh, radar um, observation of the clouds. As we can see here, uh, again, this is a, a, a rendering of, of the mission itself and the purpose of the mission. The clouds can be observed uh, from space for sure, but the particular, uh, let's say, a, a feature, a peculiarity of the mission is the observation of aerosols and the, um, uh, the, the solutions, uh, solid, solu solid and liquid mixtures in uh, Earth atmosphere to understand also the uh, nuclei center for cloud formation and uh, study uh, with a lot of data available, uh, a lot of data generation to study the climate changes and the climate evolution to better understand also the weather and cloud formation, how this uh, uh, causes uh, cloud formation, how they interact between themselves. 
uh, everything uh, will be done again for with the one single satellite and uh, with four instruments on board and uh, just to give a fast look we have an atmospheric lidar with the lidar standing for light detection and ranging a cloud profiling radar which as I said was realized thanks to the collaboration with the japan exploration agency then a multispectral eye major I major, sorry, which is uh, the, the wider looking instrument on board, which gives a, a wider perspective to the whole instrumentation uh, on board the satellite, which are basically, uh, all, uh, most of them are dedicated to have a vertical look on the ground. This multispectral eye major gives uh, a wider look to give a context on the overall observation, and then a broadband radiometer to measure the radiation emission from the planet. Indeed, as you may know, the most of the heat comes from radiation from uh, from space, particularly from the sun. But uh, with text to this instrument, so the broadband radiometer, you can also measure the radiation coming from space, but also the radiation coming from the ground of, uh, of Earth. Indeed, you can just calculate the difference between the radiation. You can compare the data when radiation comes from, uh, let's say, uh, naked ground without uh, the coverage of the clouds or the radiation uh, coming from the top of the clouds and you can compare the data and see how much different there is in the heat generation uh, with clouds or without clouds and also some com some mixture in atmosphere again as aerosols or something like that now come to the uh, last topic of the day and uh, yes that's china <laughs> we cannot uh, lose uh, a week uh, or uh, an update without to uh, thinking, uh, talking about China and because uh, China says uh, that uh, its lunar probe has successfully taken off from the far side from, uh, of the moon to begin its journey back to Earth carrying the first samples ever collected from the region. Indeed, uh, state media says that collecting module of Chang'e 6 craft uh, lifted off about at 7.38 on Tuesday, which are 23.38 GMT Monday, uh, and begin the journey back uh, towards Earth. The mission landed successfully uh, a few days ago on the far side of the Moon, and is, it is the very first time that one human unmanned mission from Earth lands on this part of, the, of, the, of our uh, natural satellite. As we can see from these images uh, from CCTV, uh, it is the very first time that uh, a rover lands on this side of the moon. China has been the very first country to do to achieve this mission. And again, as said, some samples were uh, taken off from the ground and now are uh, are going to to be sent back set back to Earth. A space official have had to use a satellite to direct and maintain communication with the Chang'e spacecraft. Indeed, uh, as I said, it is the far side of the moon. As, uh, as you may know, uh, the rotation of this uh, uh, natural satellite in combination with the rotation of, uh, of our planet and also its uh, rotation our, uh, around Earth, uh, it, it is impossible to, to have a, a direct view, a direct observation on uh, a particular side of the of the moon. It is why it is called the, the far side. So uh, there is no direct communication. We have to use satellites orbiting the moon, and that's what uh, it was uh, was done by by this by the mission. And uh, we'll see how the samples will get back on the on Earth. We we'll see which kind of information will be uh, will be able to be accessed from uh, from this side of the world. What China will say. But uh, again, uh, there is no, uh, no much uh, uh, concrete news uh, under this uh, point of view. Everything we know uh, is that the, the mission uh, is said to be successful. We can just believe this because China demonstrated to, to start to acquire some know-how. Uh, before saying goodbye, I just invite you to give a look to our, uh, to, to our video where we interviewed Benjamin Ogden, who is profession, professor of strategic space studies uh, uh, in the Army War College in the USA and we talked about this topic particularly about China how they are acquiring a strong know-how in space missions it was a very interesting interview I strongly invite you to give a look because for today uh, that was all folks thanks for uh, listening up to this point let me know what you think let me know what's the next topic you'd like to say thank you for listening thank you for uh, looking at the video on YouTube please subscribe and share this page with your friends thanks and goodbye this is the Space Info Club.